Yeah, well, it's been the right height for every other show. Yeah, we'll stick a box underneath the bottom chair then. All right. Left. 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 Oh. Oh my God, it's already started. Okay. 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 <laughs> Hi, everybody, and welcome once again to my show. I don't think it's any good. I don't think they can see me. We'll put another box under the bottom chair, you moron. Hi, everybody. And what, what a show we've got lined up for you tonight. We've got everything. I'm Holy shit! <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> we've got such a full and fun, fun packed show for you tonight with so much going on. <laughs> we'll just have to cut something out. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Maybe this. Cubic hmm. hair should be heart shaped this year. Oh, boy. I hope we don't. Oh, dear. <laughs> I hate to do it, but <laughs> this might have to go. Cool, dude. Oh, dude. I mean, look, look. Oh, wow. Gosh, I just won't sleep tonight if we have to lose this. Who does? Who does? Who does? Oh, no, I've been talking about it so long, we might have to lose. I did show my nipples, and you people didn't see it That's because right. it's on. My nipples are now on an editing room floor. Lose all of them? <laughs> I hope not. I really do. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is a big moment for me because I've interviewed rock, 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 rock stars, actors, comedians, the odd plumber. But there's a lady sitting in front of me now who I'm just a little bit afraid of because she has a reputation for writing about people in an exposing, no holds barred, throw off the underwear and show it like it is kind of way. And I hope you'll understand if I go all week at the terminals as I introduce you to Miss Jackie Collins. Oh, be gentle with me, Jackie. Be Collins. Good to have you here, honey, man. It's good to be here, Matt. Oh, I definitely like to see you. A little bit of banter right off the bat. Pretty good you're looking. Oh, thank you very much. You look pretty good yourself. Jackie, honey, Bensky. Yes. You've written a lot of books. You've had a long G-string of bestsellers. <laughs> the stud, the bitch, Hollywood-wise. What do you try to do most in your books? I try to entertain people. I want them to have fun with my books, and I want them to get a great visual trip. Ah, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> <laughs> oh, a little bit of banter. I'm going to pull the big, 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 big one out of my golf bag now, Jackie. Oh, Time really? to wheel the old driver and ask you how much of what you write is based on truth. It is toned down truth, because if I wrote about the real Hollywood, nobody would believe it. Mm. And I'm sure you've seen some things in your time, huh? Mm. I have seen many things in my time. So then you know that I'm not telling the real truth. I'm just making it kind of mild, because I, I couldn't really say what people really do, because nobody would believe it at all. Mm. Yeah, okay, fair is fair. Do people find it unfair when they can recognize who you're writing about, you know, things better left unsaid, that kind of thing? Well, I have Hollywood wives who come up to me and say, you know, this is disgusting. You wrote about my husband, and how did you know all about him? Well, every woman in Hollywood knows all about him. There was one woman who had a surprise party for her husband. Uh, it was his 60th birthday or something, and she invited every woman that had ever slept with over the last 30 years. When he walked in, they all went, surprise, and this guy was really surprised. Oh now, God. if I wrote that, you'd say, hey, you know, she's going a bit far here. They read it and they don't realize that that's the truth. That's they always think it's their it. best friend. They never think it's them. I mean, if I wrote about you, you know, if I, I wrote about this incredible, virile, attractive, sexy Keep it coming. stud, I love it. Oh, right? Would you think it was you or would you think it was your best friend? I'd know it was me. 
Mm, do the things that you write offend people, and are there people who won't talk to you anymore? They all talk to me because the name of the game in Hollywood is success. Mm -hmm. And I hope I offend a lot of people because the day I stop offending them, they're going to stop thinking that my books are so shocking. And one of the successes of my books is that people think, you know, God, this woman is writing this uh, steamy stuff. I mean, they're kind of outraged because I'm writing the kind of women that Harold Robbins used to write. Um, I mean, his men are like my women. So my women are really strong and out there and doing what they want to do and living their lives with the style and freedom of a man. You wouldn't say it's in bad taste or write about the steamier side of life? I would say it's in great taste. I mean, I love to read those kind of books myself. Don't you think a lot of men are into power and sex in Hollywood? Mm, not necessarily in that order, though. I mean, if you lived in Hollywood, what would you be into? Mm, sex and power. Well, there you go. <laughs> Isn't it true that things have changed or maybe you're just concentrating on the old sex? No, I have never met a successful actress who will admit that there is a casting couch. I mean, why should she? Because she's now successful. She doesn't have to say how she got there. Mm. Maybe she did get there that way. But the casting couch is alive and well and living in Hollywood. Not even a casting rocking chair? I mean, with a recession and everything? <laughs> I would think a rocking chair would be more fun, wouldn't you? Oh, uh, yeah, sorry. Rhythm method. <laughs> <laughs> okay, as you know, I lead a healthy life, and I'm pretty straight. You look very healthy. Thank you you very look much. very kind of, you know... All-American. Oh. Sort of like Superman with a little kink. <laughs> Which kink is that? I don't know. I better you be careful me. what I say, otherwise I'll be in chapter 12. I know you. <laughs> Pen to paper, ready? I'm pretty straight, just like my balls. Oh, I um, hear you love golf. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I hear you're very good with your balls, Max. Are you... are you all-man? Yes. We're oh, talking to okay. Vic Virile, Marvin Macho. Which way to the goddamn beach? <laughs> okay, got it. Now, were you pleased that Joan, your sister, was the one who did your films, the stud and the bitch, or did you just write them to get her some work? Uh, nepotism! <laughs> Nora, nepotism! Come on, admit it! Oh, well, okay, I will. I mean, I think because, uh, because she did the stud was the reason she got Dynasty, and I think that she's great in both of them. The stud hmm. was a fun film. I think she's complaining about taking her clothes off, but she looked pretty good to me. How mm -hmm. does she look to you? Did I, you ever see it? Excellente. Curvaceous. Uh -huh. Okay, yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Absolutely. I don't think you should have any regrets in life. If you do something, I don't think seven years later you should start apologizing for it. You know, you live your life and you have a good time and you do what you want to do, right? That's right. No, that's right. A uh, short memory means a long career. Or other things. As a woman who assesses other women and other men, how do you assess me? And please be gentle. I'm sensitive. I'm emotional. I'm easily hurt and so, so shy. I think you're very sexy. <laughs> and I think underneath the brash exterior looks a brash a interior gentle stud ah! <laughs> <laughs> she can go on again jackie i feel of all my interviews our little chat has been one of those caressing touching fondling sessions and i know you felt it too even from oh, this yes. distance absolutely there's something between us max and i'm not sure what it is and even from this distance <laughs> it's given me a nervous Every kind of pleasure talking to you. I'm going off for a cold shower and a rub down now, and I advise you to do the same. Take the ashtrays out of your shoulders, though. Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Jackie Collins! <laughs> Thank you, JC! Max Headroom Show takes a giant <laughs> leap sideways onto my cocktail bar as I welcome at last <laughs> a guest on my show. Sting. Welcome to the uh, Slager Max Headroom Show. <laughs> Sting. I suppose, like me, you've no time for golf? I have no time for golf. I hate golf, Max. You know this. 
It's it's an old man's game. Okay, I won't take that as the personal dig I'm sure it was meant to be. Your new album has a different feel to it with jazz musicians. Trendy. Has this been a musical learning process for you? I think every album you do is a learning process, Max. I think you have to learn in order to, to enjoy your life. Hmm. Am I boring you? <laughs> no, sorry, sorry. Just didn't get much shut-eye over the last week or two. It's just been uh, all go here, you know? Superstardom on the upswing. Yeah. Kind of tires a guy out. Now, can we deal with your shoes for a moment? Do you have any, uh, how shall I put it right off the top of my head, color preference? Color preference mm. in shoes? I like, mm. um, I like brown shoes, actually, Max. Is that it? Yes, I don't like black shoes. I hate black shoes. Oh, white shoes, I okay, I like a guy who knows his own mind. Several of your songs are very, uh, in quotation marks, politically conscious. Do you find you lean more towards that than you used to? I think so. I think it's a function of the age I'm at. I'm 33 and I feel that um, certain things need to be said. Like you're 33? Like I'm 33. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. Since the words of your songs are clearly very important to you, what's it like playing in foreign countries where maybe they don't understand them? Like, uh, right off the top of my head, America. Well, it's part of my responsibility, Max, to uh, explain as, as best I can in the language of the country I'm visiting what my songs are about, even mm -hmm. though I'm singing in English. And I think they appreciate the effort, even if they don't get the fine uh, tuning of the, of the whole thing together. Mm. Okay, now tell me what you really think. Sorry, staying back to shoes for a second. All weather rubber ones or the leather flap over the lace holes? I like sandals, you know? Huh, sort of Christ figure, huh? My feet can breathe in these sandals. <laughs> Nice reply. I understand you're kind of a keen tennis player, too. Maybe we can get together for a game of tennis sometime. Yeah, let's yeah. play tennis. Let's uh, go now. I f would only like to play tennis, though, if I can play in golf shoes. How do you feel about that? That could be difficult on a hard surface, you know? You no, could, uh, I don't injuries. know. It could add a, an interesting dimension to the game. What do you think? I think it would ruin my tennis court. You've got a tennis court? Of course. Sting, I'm impressed. Yeah. I'm impressed. Yeah. I'm impressed. Max. Yeah. <laughs> Sting, I love the way you do your hair. Thanks. Mm -hmm. I love the way you do yours. Cheers, thanks, thanks. Mine's a mold. What's yours? Mine, mine's um, a hair weave. A hair weave? Yeah, they weave your own hair with this plastic stuff. Incredible. Who does your stitching? Who does it? This place in Harley Street. I noticed something underneath your left ear there. I think they've uh, signed it. Yeah, it's true. Sting, I want to thank you very much for coming on my show. And before you go, I'd like you to accept this Little Memento, a pair of my very own golf shoes. No, don't oh, thank me. No, no, Don't please. thank me. Couldn't you have given me a pair of tennis shoes? I don't have any tennis shoes. I've got 44 pairs of golf shoes, and I'm giving you one pair of my golf shoes. Do you want them or not? Uh, um, yeah, I'll take them. Had a boy. See? I'll Perfect. exchange them for tennis shoes. Am I on? Testing, testing. <laughs> <clears throat> Sorry. Right. Uh, hello. I'm uh, rather new to video dating, but I <laughs> hope this tape will give you a good peek, 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 peek at me and what I'm like straight. <laughs> what I'm like. Straight away, let me tell you about myself and my favorite hobby. Girls. <laughs> My favorite hobby, girls, is golf. And I also like to fish skate. To fish, to skate, to uh, windsurf, cook Chinese stamps, um, collecting uh, pottery, read, write, wrestle, run, row, and I like to make lists. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm really fun to have around. Because <laughs> if I see something amusing, I'll make a joke about it as quick as that. Flash, but don't worry. If you have a date with me, you'll soon want to be in bed most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> oh. 
Most of the time we'll go to discos because that's when I'm in my vest late at night. Uh, at my best. Late at night, I get quite excitable. <laughs> so if you'd like a date with me, send your tape through the agency. And I do hope to meet you. And don't mention big tits. You see, in this zany, wack wacky old world of ours, some people are born funny, some acquire funniness, and some have funniness thrust upon them. But my guest tonight has all three. He had to acquire funniness as soon as he was born, with the name he had thrust upon him. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm as pleased as a punchline to have with me here Mr. Jack Second and C. Woman. Hey, Jacko. How's it going, buddy? How are you? I'm all right. <laughs> How are you? Ah, yeah. Very well, thank you. Did the name Lemon really give you a problem? I mean, it could have been Jack the kids at school were laughing at. <laughs> I don't think it's any of your business. Yes, it did. <laughs> it did give me a problem. I really didn't want to speak to my old man, my father, for about 10 years. For some oddball reason, it's bad enough with, with Lemon as, as a last name, which actually was pronounced Lemon because there's two M's in it. No but artistic he, credibility. Lemon. Yeah. He, said, he said stick with Lemon because at least they'll remember it. Mm. But uh, he, he, the middle name that he stuck me with is what really teed me off. Euler, U-H-L-E-R. So obviously the middle initial is U. For 10 years, all I could remember was Jack U. Lemon, Jack U. Lemon at school, and I never was w willing to forgive my father, who was stuck with the same name. Okay, well, thanks for helping me out on that one. A little lemonade. <laughs> Good to see you, Jack. I've never had you any... You notice the way I take 40 minutes to answer every question. Aren't you sorry you started this? No, no, that was incredible. I was uh, growing old listening to the end of that one. I never had any trouble choosing the right clubs out of my talent bag, old sport, but early in your career, before films... Did it ever cross your mind to change all your clubs and become a stand-up comic? No. No, it didn't. I love comedy, but strangely <laughs> enough, I did as much uh, dramatic work as I did comedic work, because the first films that I did were comedies, and about, the old, I guess, the third or fourth film was Mr. Roberts, which was a huge hit, and then people automatically thought of me. Uh, as being a, a light comedian or an actor in light comedy. And it took a long time, I think up until, yeah, Days of Wine and Roses, around 50, 60 or 61, before I could break that mold. Okay. I ask you that because acting is something very close to my dressing room. And I would like to ring the doorbell of your movie, The Apartment. Ooh. The permanent cold was brilliant. Acting? Uh-uh, you had one, didn't you? You had a cold. Most people thought I really had a cold. Uh, I didn't. What, what did happen was You sniffled was then. That, method. Huh? Method. Method Me acting. Yeah, method acting. If you can put obstacles in the way of achieving what the author says you must achieve within a scene, it makes it funnier. So I suggested to Billy, what would happen if he had a cold? Billy Wilder, who wrote and directed it. And Billy said, ah, uh, oh, that's a good idea. Yeah, try that. So we, so we did it. <laughs> and most people thought I did have, but I didn't. Okay. Did playing Daphne and some like it hot give you a little peek over the old gender fence? Go on. What is it like to be a girl? All I know is that it's damned uncomfortable. All of the clothes, bras, pantyhose, everything, and high heels are killers. Mm. Absolute, I don't know how they do it. It's a whole different set of muscles. Mm. I'm against the whole damn thing. Yeah, well, uh, you know, it's, it doesn't do wonders for your posture either, and uh, fishnets do give you brush burns. <laughs> Apart from an enviable one, what kind of experience was it working with old M.M. Marilyn Monroe? Oh, it, it was great. And I was very fond of her, and, and she got along great with me. It was difficult. The stories that one hears about her uh, are true. She she was not temperamental in the sense that uh, out of her own vanity or ego uh, or, or being the great star or any of that but she could not help her lateness for some reason unless she was psyched up even if she was fully made up she would sit in her dressing room on the set and everybody would sit for an hour and a half to, sometimes over two hours and she just plain wouldn't come out and do the shot mm. because she just felt she wasn't ready to face it yet she was basically very unhappy there's no question of that I'm a bit of a soloist myself, Jacko. But you starred with some great actors and actresses, as we've talked about. Is there anything that makes comedy actors different to work with or, or for that matter, difficult to work with? 
They can be difficult if they think they're funny, strangely enough. I think the biggest trap in, uh, uh, for an actor playing uh, comedy roles is to try to be funny in the sense, or think, oh, this is funny, I'm going to be funny. If an audience senses for one moment, and they may not be able to pinpoint what it is that they don't like, but if they have the feeling or the feeling is coming across because the actor feels it, that he thinks it's funny, mm. you're through. Now then, Jack, I mentioned the subject earlier on, and I could tell it touched a T-peg on your fairway. Yes, <laughs> a gold G golf. A little birdie on a par four oh, tells me you God. love it. It is your game, isn't it? It's, well, I wouldn't put it that way. It is, I it's knew it. my game, I knew all you the put other it that players way. are going to shoot themselves. Oh. I adore it. I absolutely, I'm sure one of the reasons I adore it is because I'm so terrible at it most mm. of the time. It's a crazy old uh, game, though, isn't it? I you hit it, it away from you, and then as soon as you find it, you hit it away from you again. Oh, it's weird. <laughs> Lost and found. Hopefully you hit it away. Sometimes <laughs> I don't. <laughs> Jack, I've refrained from doing any jokes about getting under the skin of your lemon <laughs> and taking that kind of pith, 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 because it's been one hell of a pleasure for me. And what's a swear word on television? Because I'm an admirer, and I think you're great. Ladies and gentlemen, my favorite hunk of citrus fruit, Mr. Jack Lemon. <laughs> Woo! You are wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> Come and revive me. Yum, 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 yum. Now we had such fun in the theater in those days, such jokes. I remember my first role. It was a non-speaking part, and I still forgot my lines. <laughs> such jokes. And when I fell through that trap door, and one of the company said, it's just a stage you're going through. <laughs> such jokes. Strap off. My trousers get shorter when I say that word. I used to say nothing matches the rising curtains because it's bright orange. <sighs> and do you know, I still wonder would I have been given better parts if I hadn't slept with the director? Ah, oh, but it was such fun! <laughs> oh, for a music that would have said the brightest heaven of invention. I'm sitting here, having just crept in to watch the rehearsal of a concert here tonight at a mystery theater in the heart of London. And if I said to you, I'm running down the road trying to loosen my load, you'd know I was talking about a certain writer, stroke performer of some classic songs. And I'm hoping to get a word with him right now. Jacko, 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 Jacko. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Jackson, I just want to sing for you, Brown. So I'm coming down the road, I'm losing my life. I love that song. Hiya, Jack. Welcome to the interview and Bill session. All right, big fella. You got a weird first name. Kind of sounds like a last name, doesn't it? Why, why is that? Did you come out feet first when they named you or something? No, actually, it's, it's my middle name. Oh, so what's your first name, or Don't you want to talk about it? It's Clyde. Clyde? <laughs> For Jackson, it's got that kind of you know black soul feel. Jackson Brown, say what? I'll rock it down, blood. Jackson, when did your songs start to change? And did you suddenly decide, right, I'm going to write about the world around me, that kind of thing? Uh, I just think that I started to to pay a little more attention about what was going on outside uh, outside of my little world. And uh, by the way, I mean I, I still write songs about I still write that introspective song every now and then. It's just that. Uh, there are some of the things that are quite a bit more critical than what goes on inside, I guess. But was it any one event which turned your insides out? Messy! <laughs> yeah, <laughs> messy. Uh, no, it wasn't any one event, but I began, I tell you, I began uh, reading books about Vietnam and about Central America, and then I began seeing documentary films about the United States, and I don't think there was any, any one moment that I suddenly realized that that most of it, what I've been taught about U.S. history was complete and utter trash. Okay, here's an important one, and I'm hanging on every word here. What do you, what do you, what do you, what do you, what do you do outside music and working? I don't, I don't do anything. I, at least I haven't for a while. I'm clinging to every syllable because I'm waiting to hear a magic little word, a certain simple little syllable. That Surf. So <laughs> That's not the word. Ski, okay, uh, let me give you a hint. Read. No. Keep going. One syllable word. 
Dig? One, no. One. Dig, uh... Heavy, heavy, heavy. Heavy, heavy, Work with retarded children. Sevi Ballesteros! Golf! Golf, I don't golf. I knew you played! Yeah, no, no, no. I no. knew you played. In the played. words of my good friend, Annie Korchmar, no, I don't golf, I rock. Okay. When I'm through rocking, I rock some more. So, on to politics! How is it you got arrested on a demonstration? Well, you're supposed to get arrested. The idea was to get arrested. And, and uh, looking back at the film of it, it's not really much like an arrest, really. I mean, nobody grabbed me by the throat and dragged me away, but... Uh, and that has to constitute arrest? It could have been a little more thrilling than just sort of tapped on the shoulder and go to stand. God, I hate those polite arrests. Yeah, the polite arrests. Would you arrests come with me, sir? Annoying. Right. Yeah. Yeah. No, it was blocking the entrance to a, to a nuclear power plant in California that there were... We're building, you know. Do you think political statements and songs have a great effect? Can you change people with your music, and do you try to? Mm, mm, mm. Yeah, you can, you can, and, you, and I try to, and, and uh, but more along the lines of that if you can, if you can influence even one person or half a dozen people to do something. I mean, you don't know who you, who's listening to your music, and uh, I mean, I'm an example of somebody that was, that was uh, changed or motivated or, or helped to, to act, you know, by hearing people's music. Fair enough. Can you see yourself getting more involved in politics? Like, would you run for office, or would you work from home? <laughs> no, that is good. No, actually, I don't think that I'm very well suited for that. What about ecology, preservation of the environment, especially golf courses? Do you have strong feelings about that? You probably think I'm leaning heavily on golf. Well, you're right, God damn it! this is my interview! I used to golf. I, I golfed. Yeah, I golfed with my father. If I wanted to see my father, that's where I would... That's what I would do. That brings me on to, yes, me, 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 and my music, and my shows, of course. Do you have any particular tastes in television apart from the obvious? I don't know if you can guess what I mean by that. The Coke commercial, yeah, I, that's, that's about my favorite, and, uh... Or my show, you could have said my shows, I don't just do commercials. Say well, my actually, show, say my show. Say, my show, say my show, say my show. Your show. There we go. <laughs> has not been aired where I am yet. I think we are going to have to wrap it up now because you've got to get out on stage. You've got to get down. You've got to play some funky tunes. And it's been great talking to you. Next time you're on my show, I'm going to sing a song with you. Mac, 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 <laughs> and Jackson. We are going to knock him dead, man. Oh, thank you, Jacko. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Jackson Brown. <laughs> And it's time for trip down ma 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 Marie Lane. Do you remember this? Hi, Max, 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 Max Hedrum here. Yes, believe me as I live and dye my hair, this is really happening. Me, with you, at Christmas time. <sighs> Everyone is so full of good cheer and love for one another, I could almost cry with happiness and seasonal goodwill. But you know, Christmas is a sad time too. <laughs> And I get a tear in my eye and a lump in my stocking when I think of all the people who can't enjoy Christmas, like the pygmies in New Guinea, walking around all day with nothing on, no roast turkey with chestnut stuffing, no snow, no little paper rolly things with a feather in them that shoot out, go, and annoy people when you blow them. Yes, there's always a pygmy less well off than yourself. Ah, oh my God, what is this? All these unhygienic pop stars, everyone we've had on this show's got dandruff. Merry Christmas, lads. Hey, I knew it. Turner, this is all too much. Close that door. There's a blizzard ah! blowing. We got a Christmas present for you. Woo! Tina, you shouldn't have a great big thing wrapped in paper. Just what I've always wanted. Guess what it is. Guess. It's my very own private manger. <laughs> <laughs> Something exciting. Oh, what could it be? What could it be? Give me a little peek. Give me a little peek. What could it, what could it, what could it, what could it be? No! It's golf clubs! That's wonderful! Just what I need! Can you put them over there with my other six sets? Oh, Teen, that's a beautiful gesture from a beautiful person. You sit right there, take, 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 take the weight off your voice, and talking of weight, have a little mince pie. Now, come on, Teen, let's talk turkey. How do you celebrate Christmas, honey bunsky? It's traditional. Um, if I'm home, I'm with family, mm. exchanging gifts. If I'm not, I'm with my musicians with a Christmas tree in whatever hotel I am. We exchange gifts um, there in my suite, and then we have dinner and frolicking afterwards. <laughs> frolicking is fun show. and laughter and drinking and food. <sighs> For a second there, I thought you meant game shows. <laughs> I want to give you something. Oh, 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 oh. I sleep with a T-shirt that says Max. Every night. 
Oh my god. Uh, <laughs> I bet the lettering's distorted. <laughs> They're in place. Oh, I don't know. The thought of my name downhill skiing down your cleavage is too much. <laughs> Dean, would it sound too silly and emotional if I said, you're the nicest Christmas present I could ever have. I mean it. Don't go. Stay and enjoy yourself. Thanks, Dina. No, oh, thank you, Max. Have a drink. All right, cheers. Have another mince pie. Bob, you are not getting all my mince pies and scotch for nothing. You've got to play for your supper. What's it going to be? If I know it, I'll hum along. Um, what do you think? Uh, I love this chord. This is your sort of chord. Frosty the snowman was quite a guy. Hey, you're beautiful, you know that? All right. Anybody out there from Walla 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 Washington tonight? Raise your right hand if you got a birthday out there today. <laughs> Rudolph the Red Nose Reindeer had very strange ears. They looked an awful lot like a hat rack. -be -be and Bob Geldof, I'm gonna invite you back uh, on my show goodbye, next Maxie. year. You're beautiful. Okay, fantastic, Bravo. Peace be with you. Thanks for coming. Bless you, my son. You shall go to Devon. It's been very special. And hey, stay alive. <laughs> See me swagger, see me sway, see me skiing in Burby, yeah, well. Give me shades when I'm on the feast. This is a fa fa family show. Start what an start. ego. I don't look like an old Soran on the beach at Drawlow Bank. Give me shades regarding my shades. Say, je ne sais quoi. Oh, French, Give me shades, so that's okay. Ain't never gonna put my shades away. I give me shades even at night. Are you gonna see? I give me shades react to life. Wanna look real guy, wanna look head You'll never look head troll. I give me shades ain't necessary. I love my shades. I can't bear well look like a rock star. I wreck a tears, TV wonder where's a ten pairs. Well, give me shades, fitness, no shades. No success, well, give me shades, but that's okay. And we're gonna put my shades away. Well, give me shades, all around. I look deep, singing for a fight. Bronze crown, hidey crown, look profound, wrap around, weird in the morning when you look like a blood cow. Give me shades, no poster. Give me shades, we miss your chrome. I got my shades on, stop and stare. I got my shades on, empty glare. Well, give me shades, well, that's okay. And we're gonna put my shades away. Well, water skiing at Monterey, war do you pair at these days? Give me shades just for my fans. Give me shades, yeah, them red bands. Give me shades, cause they're so chic. Give me shades, woo, kill my steak. Give me shades, so I look well known when I wear my shades on the telephone. I wear my shades on the Riviera. I wear my shades when it's there. Give me shades, well, that's okay. I ain't ever gonna put my shades away. I wear my shades on my head. I wear my shades. Street grand. Nighthawks, flesh and blood. Ladyhawk, Blade Runner. What do they all have in common? Yes, a man. After my own sense of drama, Mr. Root, 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 Root Beer Hauer. <laughs> Hi, Rut. Welcome to my show. Are you feeling comfortable? Yeah, very. Are you sure you wouldn't like a bigger, 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 bigger chair? It's like a little nest. <laughs> mm-hmm. You have played some pretty extreme parts, big fella, haven't you? Which was your favorite? Blade Runner. Blade Runner? It was kind of like your character. In what sense of the word? My character? <laughs> you mean my personality? Yeah, your soul. Mm -hmm. I haven't got feet. How can I have a soul? That's the problem. In what sense of the word? It's, um, it's artificial. You mean your character was artificial? No, the soul is artificial. I had no idea we'd be getting onto this existential stuff so soon. <laughs> okay, 
I've asked a lot of stars this. Sting said no. Boy George said it's for old men. Michael Caine called it a waste of a day. Tracy Ullman said it got on her tits. <laughs> so? Yeah. Golf. You love it, right? Yeah, I don't play. <laughs> I don't play yet. I've, uh, I've, I've walked on a couple of golf courses and I'm learning. That constitutes playing, Rut? Walking on a couple of courses? I suppose looking at a bag constitutes getting a hole in one. Yeah. What, what are you talking about? No, do you enjoy golf? Yeah, I do. There's a golf track right behind, behind my house and that's why, why I took it up. But what, walking on golf courses? I have do you have a set time. of golf clubs? Uh, yeah, half a set, yeah. yeah. Half a set? Yeah. You don't strike me as short enough to have half a set. Well, I'd like to play a little better before I really get serious, but it's very nice. But we walk, and it's very enjoyable. There's some deer out there, some, you know, some... It's... And early in the morning, it's real beautiful. Birdies? Eagles? Yeah, yeah. Golf and nature jokes. Owls? White owls. That yeah. four under par, an owl? <laughs> <laughs> what was, can I say, Root Beer? Was, you have been a gentleman, and I would like to thank you for being such a great guest, and certainly my biggest, ladies and gentlemen, Root, 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 Root Beer Hauer. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. It's the pressure of being a star. You know how it is. Well, you don't. But I do. <laughs> From time to time, I get a little bit temperamental with the guys around me. You see, I'm the idol of millions, and, well, that's the trouble. They're idle, and I earn millions. Price, my little gooseberry crumble. Yes. How did it all start, 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 start for you? Who was it who first suggested you went you know, to stage really school? I'm not really a cockney person. If I think I'm getting so cockney. I was brought up in Surrey and I used to talk like that, like Sarah Ferguson. Oh. I'd be really posh and say oh. things like that. I really was. Fergie Absolutely. means never having to say you're Surrey. <laughs> Seeing you there all cuddly and warm without the use of a duvet, I'm beginning to feel all <laughs> silly, broody. <laughs> you want a second baby? <laughs> All right, darling. Yes. Here's a question from one artiste to another trace, my little rhubarb tart. What are you doing at the moment? Resting, working, or do, 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 doing what most comedians do and play golf? Go golf. <laughs> my husband plays a lot of golf, Max, and it really gets on my tits. <laughs> okay. You have some hush-hush plans for a series in the States. Now, do you want to share it with your dirty Uncle Max? <laughs> Oh, tell me, darling! <laughs> um, I wanted, I'd like to do a series in America, yes, but it's, it's all in it? development and it's all hush-hush and there's some incredibly famous people involved, Max, and I couldn't tell you. I'm mm? not going to give you the scoop on Lassie? your show. So, uh... Lassie? Pardon? Lassie? <laughs> Lassie. I happen to be going out with Lassie at the moment. Um... <laughs> oh! But you're going with good intentions for an American TV show and you want to make it different and, you know, a bit cruel and everything. And they always want to make it the care and share show. Mm. Tracy, there is a problem at the beginning of the show and everyone's happy at the end with caring and sharing. They say, how about a cute little kid with a little cap, you know, that helps Tracy out and says, let's eat pizza. And you mm. always want to get some cute little kid in with you. And I don't like cute mm. little kids, you know. Does being married to a millionaire take the edge off your oh, motivation to work? He's mm. not a millionaire. Everyone used to say that, you know, <laughs> Tracy's married a tycoon. I He's got a stack of luncheon vouchers this <laughs> high, come on! I don't know, it's, not, it's, it's nice to have a bit of freedom, isn't it, with the older luncheon vouchers, as you put it, Max? Yeah, absolutely. So, I've only seen you on the Coca-Cola adverts in America. You must be making a packet. You're on repeat. Oh, well, yeah, going back to our luncheon voucher idea, I get an awful lot of luncheon vouchers and I never eat, so... That's a but the Coca-Cola ads, I mean, you're raking it in, sunshine, aren't you? <gasps> I hire people to do the raking for me. <laughs> God, exactly, exactly, Max. Well, Trace, my little custard donut, my little pastrami on rye, my little TV dinner, I... I've been the lucky one tonight. Thanks a millionaire for being such a wonderful guest. Ladies and gentlemen, Thank this is Tracy Ullman. Now, 
I know a lot of you youngsters are watching my show. Still growing up. Still at school. And maybe you'll take a little advice from me, or you wouldn't take it from your mom and dad, dad, dad. So, here goes. A few, a few important words. When you start to get interested in the opposite sex, and one of them suggests taking a little walk behind the gym to show their thing, well, it's your decision, it's up to you, but remember this. It's, it's, it's probably the last time you're gonna get to see it for just a couple of comics and a bar of chocolate. <laughs> I now realize that there has come a time in my life right now when I've gotta take a hard look at the pedestal I sit on make a very generous gesture, move over a bit, and let someone else clamber up and sit. Yes, just below me. Ladies and gentlemen, Michael, my friends call me Sugar Kane. Can you hear me down there, Mike? Yes, I can. Ah, there you are, Michael. <laughs> Great. You know, I like to make people feel at home, Mike. So, now then, seriously, how can I help you? Far away, what do you want to ask me? <laughs> how do you comb your hair? <laughs> with a pitchfork. <laughs> now, Michael, I'm going to put my interviewer hat on for just a moment, just for appearances, and ask you about your glasses, stroke, shades. But did you adopt the Harry Palmer specs as a bit of a, uh, shall I put it right off the top of my head, trademark? No, no, I, I dropped it as a disguise, really, because I was going to do um, a series as a character of three pictures, and I noticed that Sean and Connery got stuck with a bond. So instead of uh, letting my own face be the character, I put the glasses on, and when I wasn't playing them, I took them off. Hmm. Shrewd, huh? That's interesting. Kind yeah. of acting by, by, by proxy. So you just sort of mailed your glasses in and let yeah, them Yeah, let them do it. Hmm, that's, that's good. So did the glasses get paid? Yeah, very, uh, very, very well. What was your very first ambition, apart from the girl next door? Mm -hmm. The girl next door to her, I think. <laughs> You know, there's an old lawyer's motto, never ask a question you don't know the answer to. Well, <laughs> I'm going to break it and ask <laughs> golf. golf. What's your handicap? My handicap with golf is I can't play it. I once tried to learn how to play it, but it seemed that golf is one of the most unnatural things you ever have to do. You have to twist your hands around and do this and then t bend over like that and then hit a ball 300 yards. And I couldn't manage it. I couldn't even hit it. Hmm. Well, I think that's the object of the game. Yeah, but, and also, I think for me, golf is a, is a waste of a day. <coughs> now, I don't want to throw this quote in your face, Mike. Dad warned me never to take a job they could invent a machine to do, so I figured no one could invent a machine to take over from actors. <laughs> right, that's exactly true. That's exactly true. OK, so how does it feel to be sitting there looking at me? <laughs> well. If you've seen some of the actors that I've acted with, um, I've figured I've already acted with robots, I tell you. <laughs> Who's this? I ain't too good at being noble, but it don't take a fool to see that the problems of three little people ain't worth a hill of baked beans in this crazy world. Who's that? Humphrey Bogart. I thought it was Jerry Lewis. <laughs> you have said, though, that Humphrey Bogart right. is, well, maybe a little bit of a hero for you? Hmm? Yep. Definitely. Humphrey Bogart was one of my early heroes. Michael, you're my hero. And I want to thank you a lot for coming along. It's been great. Michael Caine! All right! Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Censors. <laughs> Cutting my damn show in half. Give him a pre 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 preview and straight away out comes this. That is a piece of shit. And then... Oh, no. Must it show this? Because I'm worried about whether you think carefully enough before you do it. It starts at school, right? The occasional innocent struck and pick both the And did this slip its innocent little way through the old fine mesh net? I Go just realized why they gave me this golf ball to throw at him. I said golf shit. <laughs> I said shit. <laughs> Cut! Print it! I love it! <laughs> So, so I do da da ba da. Like the do 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 does of my thing. La di da di mem 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 mem. Memories of the dum di dum. It's funny how some lyrics just stay with you. Ladies and gentlemen, 
rock, 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 rock stars, actors, actresses, world famous personalities, and a variety of social diseases. I've had them all. But now I'm trying not to giggle. <laughs> because on the old Hedrum interview screen in front of me tonight, right now, I see perhaps the wildest and most natural comedian around today, Mr. Jack Benny! <laughs> you're a nut, Max. <laughs> and you're a wacky guy. I've just been corrected. It's Mr. Howie, 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 Howie! For God's sake, don't sit on the front row when I'm on stage, Mandel. This is neat. I've never been on this. I'm on, I'm actually on TV. And you're on TV, on TV. I know, I'm on TV, on TV, on TV. So many letters, it's surreal. Oh, Howie, you have an amazing stage act, big fella. But of course, I can say that without a trace of jealousy. I, I mean, you shout at people, you pull them up on stage, you use a bag, 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 bag of toys, you do kids' voices and other stuff. Is that the real you or someone else, huh? I think it's Neil Feldman. Was he a big influence on you? Uh, Neil uh, Feldman wasn't a big influence. I got influenza from him. You're reading your notes wrong. My public, that's mainly the entire British and American population and anyone else who hasn't seen you perform, would love to hear about what goes on during your act. There's, uh, well, there's a lot of, there's a, animals. I have animals and a high wire thing that I do. And then there's this thing I do with flames. The flames shooting over 800 feet in the air. I shoot flames 800 feet in the air and, and burn animals. I burn animals. <laughs> No, I just, it's mostly improvisation. I go up on stage and I deal with the audience. I talk to them, deal with them. <laughs> You're an Eddie guy. Babe, like that. You are. You joker, you. <laughs> There's a lot of wackiness lying around here tonight. And nuttiness. Wow. I feel like an almond. Did you go straight from this wildlife into comedy or did you have a spell in a reformatory first? Mm. Did I have a spell? A spell, you know, a stretch. In a reformatory school first. Mm? No, I never went anywhere. I never got arrested or anything. I spent three years helping my family. My family had a, a court battle that I was involved with for three years and then I went into the carpet business when I, my it was my grandmother my grandmother went to Florida on a vacation and they had this act this hip, hip hypnotist and he hypnotized people isn't that a coincidence that's a coincidence and my grandmother came up from the audience and he hypnotized her into being a chicken and then he couldn't snap her out of it so we sued um, but it was weird it was I mean she's almost normal she just moves her head a little bit like that. You, you, you phone her, it sounds like loud and then not loud and then loud and not loud. And loud. You go, hello, Grandma. Yeah, hello. Hello. Like that. And we, you know, I'd sleep over and I'd hear her down in the kitchen early in the morning making eggs. You know, you'd hear. Incredible. <laughs> For a minute, you had me scrambled. Oh, the yolk's on you. Come on out of your shell. <laughs> Towie, as you know, I spread myself across all branches of the media. Singing, talking, dancing, and golf, which I'm going to return to. In fact, I, I would like to... golf. You like golf? I love golf. I don't really like playing the game. I love watching it on television. You can be my caddy, Daddy. I used to be caddy. Did you? Uh-huh. Back in Canada, where I grew up, I was a caddy. Really? For no golfers. I was just a caddy. I didn't know anybody who golfed. I used to just walk around with a... Uh, a bag of golf clubs and just hand clubs to people who didn't even want them. I was nowhere near a golf course. Hey, but you really embarrass people how and how. Do I? You do. No, I don't. I don't. You do. I don't. You don't? You don't? You don't? I do. I don't. Are we arguing? I think we're arguing. I think we are, too. Our first bat on our first date. Huh. This is weird. Is this our first date? What do you do with your spare time? I'm, uh, I don't have a lot of spare time because I'm doing St. Elsewhere, I'm doing movies, and I'm doing... So I, have a, I just started a hobby. I'm doing stamp collecting. I've been doing that for the last two years. So I probably by next year, I'll have, I'll have um, two. I'll have two stamps. But it's what it's what it's what it's what it's quality. Quality matters. And if I get some more time, I'm going to lick them and put them in a book. Make sure you lick the right side. The right side? Yeah. Oh, somebody told me to lick the back. You were, a little bird tells me, in uh, Gremlins. I believe you had something to do with that. I did the voice in Gremlins of Gizmo, which was the little, the good one. He was the good one, the one they brought home in the, in the box. And he kind of sounded like this. He, Bye, Danny. Take him a that's, that's how he sounded. <laughs> it's cute. But I do other voices, too. I do, I do, a vo in my act, I do a lot of voices. I have 
There's, um, you know, I do that too. Oh, yeah. What's that character's name? Ernest. The importance of being Ernest? Okay. Look, Hal, I've kept this question up my jacket for quite a while now. From the romp in A Fine Mess, how did the film Bobo work out? You had to act like a dog on all fours. Were you asking for that much money? I spent nine months on all fours for that, for that job. I had to live. I, I walked on all fours with it. I ruined myself. These are teeth that were bought by MGM. I knocked my teeth out doing this. I ruined my back. My feet are infected. So it was, a, but it's a funny movie. Uh, my brother's played by Christopher Lloyd from Back to the Future. My mom's Cloris Leachman, and it's the story of a young boy who's raised by a pack of wolves and brought back to civilization when he's 30. I mean, it could happen, huh? <laughs> you know, you are the funniest comedian we've ever had on the show. Wait, 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 wait. Have you ever had another comedian on the show? No. no. Thank you. <laughs> you mean I'm, I'm funnier than Sting? Oh, yeah, only just. I mean, he tells a great gag about the inner soles of his sneakers, but I, you know, I'm not going to go into that right now. He was talking about shoes. I saw that show. Yeah, but he was great. But Bob Bland compared to you because you are the funniest guy I've ever had on my screen, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Joey Mandel. Thanks for having me here, Mac. No, the sad moment is here. Choked up. Yes, the moment that we have to say good, good, goodbye. Bye. We've shared some wonderful times. But don't ever, for, ever forget, in a show like ours, there's no one more important, more important than me. So it's thank you to my team, my crew, and most of all to you, Marty, my lifelong friend and pianist. Yes, my friends, I've given them all a Cartier watch to remember me by, and I hope that they'll Pass it around, and I'll get to wear it once in a while. Marty! <sighs> I've made the finest shows there's ever been With the worst producer I've ever seen A queen it's time to say farewell, you know, <laughs> to every Jack, every Jill, every Bobby, every Frank, every Joe. And as your tears, as your tears start to flow, I hear you say, Max, please don't.